everybody. This is Dr. Richard Chang. Dr. Tom Levy and I had the pleasure of interviewing Dr. Ken Walker, who will be turning 102 years of age in February 2025, to learn his secrets to longevity. Dr. Walker, a renowned Canadian physician, columnist, and a prolific medical writer, survived a heart attack some 28 years ago. Rather than taking statins as his cardiologists recommended, he took high doses of vitamin C, about 10,000 milligrams per day, along with other micronutrients. Today, at 102, he remains vigorous and continues to lead a productive life. I think this is an important area is because, you know, for me, the way I'm looking, I'm studying is like probably Ken and to, uh, like, like Ken yourself and also Tom yourself too, is that my purpose is I want to see what's really out there that makes sense, that enables me to live healthier, longer like a Ken, you know, <laughs> and uh, at least more than 100, hopefully 120. I'm going to expand on this. I think what are the very essential and some others to me, for example, phytochemicals. We were all led to believe that plant-based foods are healthy for us. But if we're really looking into plant-based foods, there are a few issues. You know, one, like I mentioned in the short article, one issue is that actually the human ancestors were not really big plant food eaters. So we were not kind of made or born like that. Number two is that you know, most of these plant-based foods, when you're in eating quantity, actually they carry their own toxicities, you know. And plant-based foods, they have their own natural toxicity. Also, today we have a lot of these man-made, for example, the fertilizers, pesticides, all these contaminations. And, and that's certainly interesting. This is interesting. This is all I learned recently, is that many of those phytochemicals, so-called so antioxidants, they are not really true antioxidants. They are more, more like toxins. Actually, what they do is they kind of induce an antioxidant reaction in your body. <laughs> it's, just, it's like a small number of enemy poking at our defense line. They are not really our friends. They are just uh, keeping our army in shape. In a right. So when, if we really recognize these things, then we know these antioxidants are actually toxins. A small amount of the yes, they induce antioxidant, but too much they cause damage. So those things definitely you want to have them in a smaller quantity. And it must make a lot of people on the street, ordinary people, totally confused. Yeah, yeah. That you know, the more we look into these things, actually, they then we realize there's a lot to learn here in nutrition. You know, trying to do in my column, trying to use sensible approaches to to the average person. Yeah. So what you wrote up, Ken, is excellent. I agree. I like to listen to you. I mean, this is your platform. Tell us more on the other, like wisdom, how we deal with life and how these other issues. Tell us. Well, you know, I try to lead a good life with a sound life, starting uh, the sooner you get smart, at a younger age, better off you're going to be. <laughs> Unfortunately, that doesn't happen to a lot of people, but yes. <laughs> they, 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 start getting, they start getting good at about 75 years of age. There you go. It never, never works. So that really, when you look at my own lifestyle, I don't smoke. I exercise well. Uh, I have the occasional alcoholic drink, but I never drink too much. And That's I think good to know. I would think it be too. <laughs> I think maybe William Osler was quite right when he said that alcohol is for the elderly, what milk is for the young. Mm, I like that. <laughs> I like that statement. <laughs> you don't take it through a bottle, I, I do. I've been very kind to the beverage community, uh, but they haven't been very kind to me oh. <laughs> and reciprocating with with more more help in getting that message across. Um, so that um, really, there's not much more to my life than I can tell you. I'm totally convinced that if it hadn't been for reading Light of Calling, which certainly changed my outlook on life, I wouldn't be here now. 
And um, I'm grateful. For, I've always been grateful to Linus Pauling for giving me four hours of his time, you know. It was amazing. He's a well, real gentleman. Lucky and, you, uh, because you, you had the pleasure of meeting him. I never had a chance. You missed something, because he was a wonderful guy.